Okay, this is another pro-life blasphemy video. It just came up in Twitter. Somebody who's totally ignorant and carnal and hates God decided to say, Oh, well, Job 3.3 proves that you got life in the womb. Really? How about these verses? Th did you actually read the verse before you quoted it to me in Twitter? Look at this. Let perish the day on which I was to be born. Now we're going to go through the Hebrew to see if this translation is right. But look at that. I was to be born. Not yet born. I was to be born. That's the New American Standard. See? New American Standard. Alright. This is Bible Works. This is a tool that pastors use. And I mean all the big ones. Okay? This is one of the most important um, collections of Bibles in the Hebrew and the Greek and even the original manuscript. See, this is the original manuscript of Codex Biza. Okay, this is a scholarly compilation of Bibles. They don't have a particular political position. Got that? Neither do I. I'm adopted. I don't believe in abortion. But I do believe that we shouldn't abort the Word of God. And that's what the person on Twitter was trying to say. Oh, I'm going to abort the Word of God and not even read the verse I'm quoting to you. Let perish the day I was born. Going to be born. Was to be born. Okay? So this person isn't even reading the translations right. Okay, King James Bible, you know, King James only is, oh, I'll well, see a bunch of wasps got together in 1611, and they said, I gotta stop yelling, I'm sorry. A bunch of wasps got together, and they said, oh, well, we're gonna just ignore, you know, all the Bibles that are really from the Word of God that he preserved, and we're gonna say a bunch of wasps did it so we can hate the Jews. Because the Jews were expelled from England at the time the King James Version came out. Now, it's got a lot of good things I can say about it, but what's bad about it is what people are saying about it. It is not the inspired Word of God. But even if you thought it was, let the day pay... I can't use this. They, they won't let me use the right coloring for highlighting. Let the day perish wherein I was born. And the night which it was said, there is a man-child conceived. Okay? May the day of my birth perish, and the night that said, a boy is conceived. In other words, womb to tomb. Now, my pastor translated and exegeted this verse. He had a field day with the stupid pro-lifers. Forty years ago, he exegeted this. Forty years ago. So there's no excuse that there's pro-life now politicizing a fetus can you be more low and disgusting and hateful of God than that you're politicizing a fetus what did John 1836 say my kingdom is not of this world you're not supposed to politicize okay religion or faith it's against our Constitution it's against common sense and it's against the Word of God right here may the day of my birth perish and the night that said a child is conceived first of all we're gonna go over that Okay, this is the LXX translating the Greek right here. Here's the Greek. Okay, we're going to go through all that because I can read the Bible in Hebrew and Greek and so could you if you learned how to use this tool. Okay, so that's, a, that's you know, Brenton's translation. Now, since, you know, there's only a few English Bibles showing, there are over 200 Bibles in here. Okay, we're going to use the English and see if anybody disagrees. And then I'm going to show you what the original actual Bible says. Let the day perish. Okay, this is the, the Vulgate, you know, Catholic Vulgate. May the day perish in which I was born. Okay, and then conceptus. The conceptus is really the way they pronounce it in Latin. Et homo. Okay, well that's their way of translating the Hebrew or the Greek. Actually, they just, um, they just kind of screw up in their translations in the Vulgate. Okay, let the day perish. Perish the day in which I was born. Perish the day, may the day I was born perish. May the day I was born perish. May, see, they all copy each other. They don't actually look at the Hebrew. They just copy each other. See, scratch out the day 
I was born. That is what? God's word to the nations. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, it's translation's kind of screwball. J.P.S. Tanakh. J.P.S. Tanakh. Now, this is where we want to really pay attention. These Bibles are all saying conceived. The J.P.S. Tanakh. Okay, these are Jews. They're translating their own Bible in Hebrew. Shouldn't they know something about what the Hebrew actually says? A man-child is brought forth. That doesn't mean conceived. That means born. It's two ways of saying born. Okay? This is a New American Bible. It isn't the JPS. Okay? The Tanakh of 1917. This is the New American Bible. And the child is a boy. Yeah! It's born. See? Born and born. Not conceived. All right, NAS. All right, they go with conceive, yeah, because it's politically sensitive. They got to sell their Bibles, and in 1977, okay, starting in 1960, actually, the the, the egregious anti-God, disgusting pro-life movement was born. They're so self-righteous. They want to tell you what to do with your body, but it's God's choice, not theirs. And after you're born, well, I don't care about you. So, so it's translated conceived because they can't sell their Bibles unless they make it politically correct. Doesn't matter if it's God correct. It just has to be politically correct. See, same thing with the Net Bible. Just as bad. NIV. NIV, this is the British version, had courage. A boy is born. Yeah, because that's what it really says. Alright, so we're, here's where we're focusing. We're noticing that each of these translations are all in agreement until it comes to this last word. Is it conceived or born? But everybody's agreeing that this is birth in the first clause. See? NIV, NJB, New Jerusalem Bible. That's a Catholic Bible. It's following the Latin. The Latin says conceptus. See? I showed you that already. Where is that Latin? Well, we'll get right up here. See, conceptus. Conceptus. If you can't read the Latin, you don't know that. I'm sorry, but you, if you want to pretend to be a Christian, you better learn the Word of God. Otherwise, shut up. And that's what the pro-lifers won't do, because they want their emotional bullshit to, to make them win the White House, which they just did. And they're under God's discipline for it. ESV, politically correct. Throw that translation out. It's a newer one. It's a piece of gar garbage. Geneva Bible from 1599. Okay. They were being politically correct too. Okay. God's Word of the Nations. And that. We've already gone through these. New International Reader's Version. I've never even heard of this one. They're being politically correct. Okay, New Living Translation, that's a really bad translation. Really bad. I, it, it reverses words, which is what's happening here. New Revised Standard. Again, politically correct, because look when it comes out, 1989, after Roe v. Wade. How are they going to sell Bibles if they, don't, if they don't abort the Word of God in order to make the pro-lifers want to buy it? Okay? This is the... the Webster Bible, okay, and Webster was living in the 1800s when everybody followed along with the Latin, okay, so that's based on the Latin. Here's the Tanakh, okay, a different Tanakh, 1985 Tanakh, after Roe v. Wade, you getting this? It's a political change in the translation, born versus conceived. Webster, <clears throat> Webster is part of the same generation in the 1800s. That all oh, you know, well, we're we're gonna we're gonna just go along with the Latin, okay? Young's literal. That's going along with the Latin because there's no word for conception in the Hebrew and Greek. No word at all. This doesn't say in the night where I was conceived, okay? None of it. There's no word for conception at all. Zero in the Hebrew or the Greek. There's only born. Okay? 
as you're going to see. Now, hopefully I've given you some kind of long idea. Oh, there are a lot of Bibles, and they say, all Greek born here. Okay, but some of them say conceived here. Even though there's no such word in Hebrew or Greek to say conceived. None. There's a word for born. Well, that Conceived doesn't have a word. Because you're not human until you're born. Genesis 2-7, which I just did the video on. All right. So now let's go through the Hebrew, okay? I didn't write these words. I didn't write the lexicons you're going to see, okay? All those lexicons, all those words in the bottom half of the screen. I didn't write them. These are lexicons written by scholars. I'm just showing it live on screen. Okay, here you go. May be destroyed. See, perish. Abad. For Abad, you know, Abaddon. See? It's in the Cal Imperfect. So, it's, it's kind of got a justive. Yeah, he did say that. Thank God. See this word, justive? Jussive is a, a fancy word for cohort. Oh, that's a fancy word too. Cohortative. Um, something you wish to happen. It has also a connotation of ordering. Okay. So, let perish. That's the correct translation so far. Yom. Day. Alright. See? We're doing... I have to be careful when I click because otherwise it's going to do a word search. Let perish the day, yom. Okay? So this is... This is... Um, yobad. Yom. Yobad, let perish. Yom, the day. Awalat. This is a word for birth. Awalat. Okay, and you can see that in the lexicon right there in front of you. Bo. Ba. But, well, it says bo, but it's not the verb. It's the, uh, um, in what, uh, it's a preposition meaning in or sometimes because of. All right. That's 12. Yeah, okay. By the way, you can download these lexicons yourself. They're over 100 years old. They're in public domain. This is the, the word book of the Old Testament. You can also buy the hardback in eBay and sometimes in, um, whatchamacallit, Amazon. It's like a 15-volume set. And I've got half of it in hardback. And, of course, right here it's showing up on screen because it's part of Bible Works for free. One reason to buy Bible Works. It costs like 350 bucks. It's worth it. Especially if you're a pro-lifer because you're in deep doo-doo with God for being a pro-lifer because you're not reading your Bible. Now, here we go. So now, this word right up here. See, we got, we got, Yobad, Yom, Olad, Bo, meaning in, it's got a preposition with a suffix at the end because it's the it's talking about the day and then here we go wa ha la la wa halela that means night it's very famously used in uh, Psalm 90 by uh, uh, Moses and it's also famously used in Genesis 1, which Psalm 90 and, and Genesis 1 are metered to each other. If you don't know what meter is, I can't, I can't stop to explain it now. I've been documenting it for eight years. Wahlela. Wahlela. Okay. Ahmad. Now see, now he's personifying night. And the night that said, Amar. Omar. Amar. Yeah, it's Amar. And the night, which said, knights don't actually talk, but he's, he's being poetic here. And the knights that, that talk, 
the night that says, okay, ha, ra, okay, see in the lower left hand window, this is not my writing, this is quote, the workbook of the old Hebrew Old Testament, I didn't write these words, bear, okay, some people add conceive, but and some people use it for pregnant. But the first idea is bear. Okay. It's birth. See, like, look. If you conceive the gospel, you're not saved. You have to be born again. Why? Why? How do you know? Because the gospel is in you. You're pregnant with it when you hear it. But if you don't believe it, you're not born again, therefore not saved. Christ didn't say you must be conceived again and therefore you have eternal life. He said you have to be born again to get eternal life. Okay? It's to bear. When you bear children... That means they're born. You haven't born it until it's born. You got that? Bear, born. Got that? Hara. So all these translations that just say conceived are not right. The JPS Tanakh and a bunch of the other ones. See, look. This is wrong. Okay? No, that's the LXX. That's the Greek, so I'm not going to show that yet. This is wrong, 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 and wrong, wrong, wrong. This is the JPS 1917 Tanakh before, you know, 3,300 years, nobody tried to say that a fetus in a womb, if, if it came out, if it got aborted, nobody tried to call that murder. That's an invention of the disgusting, lying, pro-life movement because they want to politicize a fetus in order to get political power because they hate God and they drool instead over Caesar. Well, this translation precedes all that. And it's by the Jews. They ought to know their own Hebrew, okay? A man-child is brought forth, yes. Bear, remember, hara, right up here, hara, right here, hara, bear, bear. Now, when you are pregnant, you are expected, see, you are expected to give birth, but the idea is that you will be giving birth, okay, and here, here's how they're, they're explaining it. You got hara, then that's not really conceived. Bear and labor in giving birth. Because if you are pregnant, it is expected that it will give birth. That's a good reason to be against abortion. Because you don't know if God will bring it to term. Now, if the pro lifers simply argued that way, they would be fine. But you would therefore have to say, well, it's God's choice, so Caesar shouldn't have a say in whether or not you bring the term. That's got to be between God and you, because that's a spiritual decision you go to God about. Because it's God's choice whether it be born, see? And labor, giving birth. Actually, this is not correct either. The, the word for labor is actually in about the rape of Tamar. That's uh, Anna. And it's used famously in Isaiah 53:11, "Mama laf sho." Okay, he has birth pangs on the cross. Odinon in the in the Greek, which I'm covering in the Matthew 24 videos, which are against the pro-lifers as well, a prediction by Christ. Okay, so hara, properly translated by the Jews of their own Hebrew, a man-child is brought forth. Yeah, because it means bear. Alright? See, child is a boy. That's N-A-B. That's not, that's not Hebrew. That's not a bunch of Jews saying it. 
You know, because a whole bunch of Christians who are pro-Donald Trump are anti-Semitic, too. So all of the Jews invented it must be wrong. Boy is born. See? NIV. Where are they getting this boy is born? Right here. See, it really helps to do a little homework before you write somebody in Twitter and cite a verse that proves you wrong. Ha ha. Bear. If you bear children, that means they're born. And if you bear children, it's expected that if you're pregnant, they're going to be born. It's based on birth. It's not based on this current status. Okay? And then you have Gavar. That's a nickname. Gaver. Gaver. That's uh, in Hebrew, that, that's got the connotation of being a noble person. Nobleman. Okay? And it's a male... See... It's masculine singular. Ah, oh, crud. You know, if people just taught the Bible properly, you wouldn't need people like me showing it to you live on screen. See? Masculine singular. That's where they're getting a boy. Okay? The child is a boy. Let perish the day on which I was born, and the night they said the child is a boy. That's really not a bad translation. A boy is born. That's a good translation. JPS Tanakh, a man child is brought forth. And that, that, you know, that's kind of, that's 1917 language, you know, trying to be poetic. Boy is born. See, what you're looking at here, hopefully you see it by now, is that a good half of the translations are saying a boy is born, not conceived, born, okay? Now, this shouldn't be too hard to understand, but if you don't know anything about Judaism, then you don't understand why the wording is what it is. Why is this so, what do you want to call it, wordy? Let the day, Yom, see, unfortunately, the stupid Bible Works 9 has the wrong highlight color and you can't change it. Let the day, Yom, perish. That's the let perish. The day, see, Yobad, Yom, Ulad, on which I was born. And the O, let it perish, it, okay, in which, and the night, Wahlela, Amar, that said, Hara! Born a giver, a man. Now, if you understand Jewish culture, or if you understand the Bible's explanation of Judaism, you should go all the way back to Genesis 1 1, which says, And there was evening, morning, one day. Okay? The Jewish day starts at Hela, Helaila. And the day, called Boker in Hebrew, is a solar day. In our thinking, the night follows the solar day. But the night and the solar day are occurring on the same day. At sundown, it becomes a new day in Bible and Jewish accounting. But it's still the same solar day. The Bible always accounts in solar years. The Jews got that kind of screwed up. And so do the Catholics. Because they can't ever get Easter right. Can't ever get Passover right. But the night is occurring on the same solar day as the day. So, if he's born during the day, Yom, then what about the night? The night that said, a man-child is born. And it's not just a man-child. This is a nobleman. Giver. This is what you say for a noble person. Like if we were to say a gentleman. Or we were to say a nobleman. The Hebrew equivalent of that is Giver. Alright? That's where they're getting the word boy. Alright? So if you were born during the day... At night, there'd still be a celebration. Oh, a boy is brought forth. Hara. Born. 
bear. See, bear. Now, how do you know that's really what it means? Because it already starts out with walad, right here. You, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to explain. The evening follows the morning. Okay. And after you're born, you're not conceived. So if you mention born first, iwalad, then this hara cannot mean, cannot mean conceived. Because the night is after the day. Okay? It's after. It's after. The accounting is before because after God created the first day, let there be light, the day obviously came first. Oh, I finished my work for the day. All right, and then night comes, and that's the next day. Okay, you got that? Because the first day that God restored the earth, Genesis 1, 2, or not 1, 2, it's a little after that. 1, 3, I think. Let there be light. That's day. <coughs> so in a solar day, the day is first. And the night is second. Here, the day is first. The night is second, just like science. <coughs> okay? Amar, that's the night talking. Born. If this is born, you don't go back into the womb to be conceived, so this does not mean conceived. It's the night following the day. They're still celebrating the birth during the day. And they're saying Gever. Now, I hope you understand this. You can't know it's a man, a boy, born, until it's born. They didn't have, okay, they didn't have ultrasound in those days. So you wouldn't know, while it was still in the womb, what gender it was. So Hara can never, ever, ever in this verse mean conceived, period. Because they know it's a boy. Because the night, Hallelah, follows the day, Yom. Now, honey, if you're so dumb, you still want to try to claim this verse. It means life begins at conception. you got bigger problems than I know how to address. You need 1 John 1 9 like breathing. Or God's going to kill you. I'm not saying that because I want it to be true. I'm saying that because that's what the Bible says. Go read 1 John 5 yourself. When you keep on being in a state of sin, and you refuse to use 1 John 1 9, and you keep on aborting the Word of God, sooner or later your life ends, and He will take you home. It's capital punishment, 1 John 5 16. Ask God about it yourself. You don't need proof from me. Use 1 John 1 9 and ask God about it yourself. Say to him, well, are these verses really true? Is this the real meaning of it? He'll tell you. How do you think I know? Peace out.